in the film biz, what they do when they want to record background noise and like murmuring at a cocktail party or at a business meeting or something. But what they usually do is they ask them people say rhubarb, 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 rhubarb. So uh, Andrew, can you? <laughs> I want to get a level. I can I'm John Barkley. Okay, I'm going to find out a bit about you guys in general. Okay, remember you're 300 people, so. Um, <laughs> so, so back in the. I'm kidding. Back, back in the dark ages before fire, I was in high school. Okay? <laughs> And <laughs> no, no, seriously. And in high school, I took this course called Cinema Studies, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. And ever since high school, that's what I've been doing. I went to went to York University, uh, and I studied for four years in university film production. And then I formed a company called Trine Productions, and I've been working for that company for 27 years. Okay. So I wonder about you guys. How many people here have their own camera? Hands up. 100%. 300 people have their own camera. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. How many people can edit their own? 100% can edit. Cool? Yeah. So you can independently manipulate picture and sound. Okay. Great. All right. Um, this is what we're going to talk about. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is uh, concept and then something I call paper, which is basically getting your ideas down on paper. Then I'm going clockwise. The next thing I'm going to talk about is breakdown. And then I'm talking about scheduling. Okay, so these are the, this is what I call the four phases of pre-production. So we're going to talk about conceiving stuff, how to conceive an idea. We're going to talk about how to get it down on paper. Then we're going to talk about, once it's down on paper, how to break it down into production elements. Okay? And uh, then how to break that down into a schedule. So that's everything you need to know before you go out and actually shoot your video. Okay? First thing I want you to remember is don't edit yourself when you come up with your idea. Just daydream, blue sky, brainstorm. Don't think about how you're going to do it. Just let your imagination run wild, okay? So, when you start coming up with your idea, yeah. just go wild. Don't edit it. Well, you can, uh, do you have an idea already? Did you come up with an idea? No? I didn't even, like, okay. that my environment, my this, my that, like, I don't know. Well, we'll get into that in a second, okay? We'll get into all the categories that they, they posted up there. But when you're, when you're starting to think about things, before it gets down on paper, don't, uh, don't, don't restrict any idea. So for example, if your idea involves some guy getting in a spaceship and going to the moon, write it down. If that's, if that's the right thing to do to get your point across, then uh, let your character get in the spaceship and go to the moon. Okay? How to do that is the next stage, right? So don't, don't jump, get ahead of yourself. So daydream, brainstorm, any, any wild idea counts at the beginning. Okay, just write it all down. You're just correct, collecting raw material for your script. You can, you can cut things out later. So just go crazy, okay? Now, here's the contest categories. My community, my culture, my environment, my future. So choose a category. Think about what you might want to, what issue in one of those categories you might want to address. And um, in order to win this contest, you're going to have to uh, raise an issue and suggest a solution. Okay? So, let's, let's go through it one by one. My health, what kind of things would, would fall under my health, do you think? Teresa? Oh, okay, yes? Um, like mental, like mental disabilities. Yeah. Uh, 
What other, what other kind of things? Would it be, um, hmm, like what food you consume and how it affects your body? Sure, sure, healthy eating. Um, drugs, alcohol, yeah, drugs, alcohol, sexual health, all that stuff. Mm, delicious. Delicious stuff, right? That's the juicy topics there. Okay, so what, what the uh, partners of this project want to see is your perspective on some of those issues, okay? So you probably get a lot of health education in school, but we're not interested in what the school tells you, we're interested in what you can tell us, okay? So how, how, can, how can you make yourself and your community a healthier place? Okay, next one, my community. What kind of stuff might be in there? Yeah? Trails and things you like about North Randall? Sure. Um, like if you go to a club or a group, what you do there? Sure. Like volunteer groups or service groups? Yeah. Like, um, like guides, that kind of thing? Yeah. Church groups? Okay. Doesn't have to doesn't have to be negative, right? That doesn't have to be like things that you hate about the community. So who do you, so who's your audience for this stuff? Do you think? Who, when you make a video, you're making it for somebody. YouTubers. Who? Most likely YouTubers. YouTubers? You think you think the whole six billion people on YouTube are going to watch your video? Not six billion. Who's going to see this video? Who do you think? People that are concerned about whatever. Like oh, I'm concerned That's so general. about my culture. People that want to find out more about it. Who knows about this contest? People that are it? Yes, and? Well, yeah, you know, your community is going to, it's more likely more people are going to look at it in Campville or North Granville or Lanark, or Perth. It's probably going to be, what, teachers and students and stuff. It's going to be people who go to the Dandelion Festival because they're going to be screening at the Dandelion Festival. <laughs> So here's your chance to talk about your community, right, to people in the community, okay? So don't, don't forget your audience. My culture, what does that mean? Like What's your one, culture? Like that one in the open video, the girl who has, like, did a rap on it. Yeah. Um, the, our culture these days, like, adults think we're stupid and we spend too many time, much time on the computer, but it's actually helping us improve. Oh, no. <laughs> You're doing it all. <laughs> okay, so um, your culture is, it's more than just rap. What, what are the things besides music is part of your culture? Um, art. Art. Quiet. Art. The way you live. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look over on this side. This side's disintegrating. Stop. Stop. So who are, the, who, are the, who are the first people around you? Your friends and your family. Right. And then it starts to expand in bigger, bigger circles. Yeah. So how, how far is your community? Or your culture? How far does your culture extend? You've got your friends and family, you've got your community, which is what? Bishop's Mills? Yeah. <laughs> it's bigger to what? North Granville? Yeah. Are you part of the North Granville? Is that part of your culture, North yeah. Granville? Yeah? But then there's a whole like worldwide culture, right? Yeah. Whole youth culture. Right? Okay. Like clothes, yeah. style, and okay. celebrities, and so you said. Yeah, you said most people think your uh, your kids are stupid and you're misunderstood. So what would you, so if you're talking to this community, what would you want them to understand about your culture? That we're better than them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Possibly. Okay. Well, That's stupid. Right. okay. So so how would you change things? Um, how how would you change that stereotype? that they think you're stupid. What kind of message would you give them? What would you want to show them or tell them? Okay, my environment. What's going on? What's going on in your environment that bugs you? Sorry? Littering. Still Littering. Littering? Oh yeah, boy, that bugs me. What's up with that? People are lazy. They don't feel like no, it's more than lazy. Most, you know, it takes a lot of effort to pick something up and throw it out your car. Yeah, but it's it requires less work than finding a garbage can. I suppose. Just lack of respect. And maybe you could do an instructional video of how to pick a coffee cup <laughs> off the ground and put it in the Tim Hortons thing. Yeah, how to we, lift the lever. Yeah. 
and how to put it in, <laughs> you, can make you know, it a with graphics and, and stuff. And make it sound like it's a complete professional instructional yeah. video. You get a professor <laughs> there with a, <laughs> with a board and a chalk. That would be so pointed. much fun. This is how you, you bend at the waist, you extend your arm, right? Maybe you could be do something careful. like that. Be very careful. Do not touch the rim. Yeah. Be careful. There may be hot coffee inside. Right, right, yeah. You do not read, want to risk read the, I think it even says this on here. Caution, caution, hot coffee. Do not pour in your lap or something like that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> kind of Don't pour hot coffee in your lap. No crap. <laughs> okay. Um, so now here's your chance to, to talk a pet peeve about the environment. Like whether if it's littering, like Teresa said and uh, put it out there. Uh, my future. What's that? If there's not going to be one because the world's going to blow up and have flaming ballers. <laughs> I'm not kidding though. It's going to end because we're so wasteful and we shove gases in our air and then we eat too much things and we weigh down the earth and we're you using up the water the and then, you and then we're like, oh no, we're going to die. What? Never saw that coming. So, okay. Yeah, you can put that in way. Okay, so how do you fix it? How do you fix it? That in a video. How would we fix it? Yeah. We start with one person at a time. You can start with the world the way. Okay. The way she You can start with one person at a time. But see, like, a lot of these are interrelated. Like, you might do something that applies to my environment and my future, right? Okay, so those those are. If you want to win, you want to win, then your. Your video has to address one of those five topics. Yeah. What they want, what they want to know is problems and solutions. Okay. All right. So I've, I've got, I've got three things I could show you. I can show you a public service announcement that I made that was uh, run in theaters. Does anyone know what Amnesty International is all about? Nope. No, Amnesty International is a worldwide organization that tries to get uh, prisoners of conscience, like political prisoners, out of jail. So, you know, some country like North Korea or, or uh, you know, some really oppressive regime, they have political prisoners, people who are arrested and put in jail without a trial and they're just held there for their views, their political views. So Amnesty International organizes people to write letters. So it's really small scale. People get together in groups of 20 and they write, everyone writes one letter saying we know about this guy and we know he's in prison and uh, we think you should let him out because it's not fair. So I did this uh, PSA, 30 second PSA for Amnesty International. Amnesty International works for the release of men and women in prison for their beliefs. Through letters, public opinion can make a difference. Another day without freedom. For more information, contact Amnesty International. What you? Once you start brainstorming and once you choose a topic, choose, just try and formulate your idea in one sentence. Just try and get it down in one sentence. Now, I had to look up adages and aphorisms and actually they seem to be the same thing. So if you lose, here's, here's one way to get your message across. Because what you're doing is not just creating a video for fun or for entertainment. You're trying to, you're trying to send a message. So your message should be able to, you should be able to write your message down in a single sentence. And the more time you can spend on perfecting that sentence, so it's exactly what you want to communicate, then you can build on the rest of it. So adages and aphorisms are really handy things. You know, these are folkisms. Don't burn your bridges behind you. A watch pot never boils. So the, you know, if you can hang it on that, you know, if, if you choose a topic and you can come up with an idea and hang it on a single sentence formulation, it could be, now, you know, you can forget about adages and aphorisms for now, but if you say, I think that littering is a sign of disrespect and what we have to do is have more respect for the environment. You know, if you can just formulate this, that may not be exactly the right sentence that, to hang your video on, 
So start perfecting it. So that's what you want to do in the concept stage. First of all, let your imagination go wild. Don't edit yourself about it. Don't think about how you're going to do it. Choose a topic and try and, try and get your message, distill your message down to a, to a sentence. Okay? And then you can build the next stage, right? Which is paper. Okay? So do a bunch of brainstorming. Don't think about how you're going to do it. Try and, try and come up with an idea that you can, you can describe in one sentence your issue and your problem, and then just simply write it down on a piece of paper. <coughs> okay? Now, what happens when you put it down on paper? That means you're committing to something. You're, you're actually putting it on a piece of paper that you, you can share with your team. And when I say your team, I'm going to recommend that everybody work with at least two other people because there's a lot to do, and, and those other two people can be making videos too, and in fact, that might be a great idea, that, that a team of three produce three videos. And each video, there's a team leader, or a producer director, and there's one person looking after the visual aspect, and one person looking after the audio aspect. So, if you've got friends who want to participate in this contest, offer to help them with their video, and you can help and they can help you with your video, okay? Now, <clears throat> as, as much as I put emphasis on writing things down and committing it to paper, remember it's only a blueprint. There's no, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, there's no prizes for best screenplay or best script. Nope. Nope, so it doesn't matter. So, you're not, don't, don't get too obsessed with your script. Spend some time on it, and I'm gonna show you some script formats. Uh, here in a second um, that'll help you uh, organize your thoughts on paper. But remember, it's only a blueprint. So when you go out there and you start shooting your video, don't, you know, things are going to happen on the day. It's going to rain rather than be sunny. Someone's not going to show up. Doesn't mean you just sort of quit and walk away. You have to adapt on the day. But unless you have some sort of plan to fall back on, you're not going to get anything worthwhile. <laughs> so, so have you given any thought? Of, are you just going to go out with your camera and your team, and sh you're going to have a script? But what, are you going to have actors? Well, yes. You're thinking of having actors? Yeah. You think of writing dialogue for the actors? No, actually, I know a couple of good people who are good at improv. Good at improv. Uh oh. Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> well, like, Im really, see, people. Like, see, yeah, that really scares really me when I say when I hear improv. But, go ahead. Like, Outline, but there we go. they can't memorize their lines. And right. Stuff that comes to that. Okay. See, Good. So you can you can write dialogue. You can write dialogue, but then you ask them to put it in their own words. So it's good good if you have dialogue in your head. They don't have to memorize it. So you're thinking of doing a drama, some sort of drama. Oh well, no, I didn't mean like a drama means like fiction. Fiction. You're not going to do a documentary, you're going to do some sort of... I'm going to show you something called Master Scene Format. That's how you write a, a dramatic script. And you're going, to, you're going to ask me questions like, why do you do it that way? Are you ready to ask me questions about... Why do you do it that way? Well, now wait, until I show you. <laughs> There's a reason. There's a reason for doing it. And it's all about being able to plan and be able to and communicate with other people so they can they don't get confused and it turns into a mess. Okay, do you, would you like to see master scene format? Yes, you would. Okay. Okay, just stop. Okay, here we go. Would you like to see master scene format? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you see that? I'm going to put my glasses on. Okay, this is how you write a dramatic script. Okay, so what is all this stuff? Why does it look that way? So from, yeah, so that's action. Action, if it goes from one margin to the other margin, that's, that's action. That's, that describes what happens. And then, then you put the character in all caps right in the center, and their dialogue comes down there, right? So there's, there's Charles as a character, man as a character, Charles as a character. So that's, that when an actor looks at the script, you can see really quickly, if you're, if your actor is called Charles, you can see there, there, and that's all the, he's just got two, two lines on, on the script. That's all he has to worry about. And your character is called Man, 
there's man, there's Lancelot, dragon, right? So this is a bit of direction. The dragon, while he's laughing, he says, I am the dragon. Okay? Dialogue is indented there, so it's really quick to find out. So what you, what you want to do is lay it out so it's really simple for people to see what's going on. It's easy to read, okay? And it's easy to break down. We'll get, in, we'll get into breaking, breaking things down later. What does breaking down mean? It means taking your script and turning it into different parts so that you can shoot it effectively, okay? So here, here's a rule of thumb. When you lay it out like that, you see there's a lot of empty space. One page equals one minute. So here, this is page 15. This is 15 minutes into this feature film. This is what happens in one minute. That takes a minute. So use that as a rule of thumb. If you write it out this way, then you know by the end of your writing whether you've got a five minutes video or a 10 minute video. Like if you had 20 pages, good luck, right? If you have two pages, you know, you've got a little bit of room. You have to talk like this. Yeah. So if you lay, see, that's another reason the master scene format is help, helpful is that if you lay it out like that, you can see that's indented about two inches and two inches on that side. You, you put in capitals the characters so people can find it really easily and they know what, what is dialogue and they don't confuse it with, so you don't have a character saying cat hisses and shifts. That's just, that's just a description of the, act, of the action. Okay? So that's master scene format if you're, if you're doing a drama. So this is another kind of format for a script that say you're doing uh, like a documentary or something. So what you do with this one, I call this audio video format. You just put video down, you just put a description of what the scene is, and we can't read this very well because it's cut off. Then you, then you write down the audio. And in this case, this audio is voiceover. Do you know what voiceover is? Yeah? You don't see the person on screen talking, just, just the audio, okay? So this is, this is a script for a 30 second. This is 30 seconds. And the way to time it out is just if you read the narration, it, you should comfortably read it in 30 seconds. Anyways, this helps you. Now, why do we lay it out that way? Well, you've got all your visuals on one side. You've got all your audio on the other side. And this could say plate crashing. Or this could be sound effects or it could be music. But right now, this one is just for... Um, voiceover. So when you look on the video side, that says soldier prepping and firing a musket. Cut to a girl looking out the window. Right. So this, these are the shots in order, from top to bottom, how you want it to look. Now that's just that's if you really got control of the material. Sometimes you just shoot and you figure that all out in editing. So, but if you're planning, if you want to plan and get, have the biggest bang for the buck on the screen, then lay it out this way, because this is going to help you uh, when you start breaking things down. Okay? What do I mean by breakdown? I'll get into that in a second. Breakdown. Okay. It was a time of war in Jane Austen. The Americans are coming. The Americans are coming. Why watch? when you can participate. Dance with your Mr. Darcy, survive an 1812 election, come to the Bicentennial Heritage Fair in Spencerville, Ontario. Okay, wow, that's fast, eh? 15 seconds? Just because they give you five minutes doesn't mean you have to use all five minutes. I bet you, I'm not on the judging committee, I bet you the winning video is gonna be two minutes. You do a lot in two minutes. Um, and how many pages would that be? Two. Two? Great. Good. Yes. Break down. Here we go. Okay. So now, let, let's go. How do I go back? Anyways. So you've got your script. Remember we had all that uh, video side and audio side? Now, the next stage you go through, so once you have your script, this is the important part, you break it down. So you go through the script and you, you look at it through the lens of just saying, what locations do we need? Where are we going to be? And you write down all the locations. You go through your script and say, what kind of props? Do you know what a prop is? Property? What's a prop? 
Well, it could be a costume, but a prop would be like. Prop is like a, like a piece of furniture or, or something. Mm-hmm. Object that you remember in the script before it said uh, a guy fires a musket? Well, you need a musket. Yeah. Right? Right? And people are sitting around a supper table, so you need plates and dishes and stuff like that. You'll be surprised. When, when you write your script, you start breaking it down into all the different things. What do we need? Okay, time of day. If somebody is waking up in the morning, you should shoot it in the morning if you can. So maybe they're camping outside or something, and sunrise comes up, so you need to shoot it at sunrise. So you go through your script and you figure out all the things that you need, what you need. Okay, so you've written the script, the perfect script. It's, it's, the, it's a perfect script, it's going to work. Now you have to analyze things. Figure out, break it all down. Okay. So yeah, once again, I'm saying. So if you went through this for props, what props would we need in this video? <clears throat> what costumes would we need? What uh, what locations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you, you got to do this. And say you're borrowing some gear, and people say, "Well, oh, I can help you, but only for one day, or I can only help you in the morning." Right? Say you need uh, 10 people dancing, and they can only come in the morning, so when are you going to shoot that? In the afternoon when they're not available, right? And you can animate them in 3D. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Here's another thing. Remember I showed you this uh, uh, master scene format? Well, here's, here's an easy way if you want to figure out how to shoot it. Here are some... Uh, do you know what WS stands for? Do you know what CU stands for? Do you know what XCU stands for? No. New? Okay. So, CU stands for close-up. So you just take your script, you wrote your dialogue, right? No, they, these Elsa, whoever you cast as Elsa, she can always uh, improvise that, right? Because you're big on improvisation. You say, Elsa, here's the script, but use your own words. So instead of saying, but how, you, she could say, what? <laughs> Anyways, but you, when you set up your camera, you want to get her saying that in close-up. But you also want her to say that in wide shots. So you do two takes. You do a close-up, but just from here to here. Right? This conversation she has with Lancelot and Charles, right? But then you, you back the camera up. and see, You're making these decisions now, before you get on location, where there's lots of problems and lots of changes happening. Then you also shoot it as a wide shot. WS is wide shot. CU is close up, extreme close up. And I had another, I had a medium shot going down that way that you can't see, but it doesn't matter. So what, what does that mean? Look at, look at what you can do. If you shoot that way, you can edit. Look what you can do. You can cut between the wide shot to the close up, to the extreme close up. You've got, this is called coverage. You've got, you've got it covered different ways. Okay, so that's part, that's part of what you do when you analyze the script. You figure out how you're actually going to shoot it. So the more decisions you can make before the day, the better prepared you are. And this, this workshop's all about planning. Okay? Now, you may not go that far, but I'm just giving you some perspective on what you could do. If you wrote a script, you could line it, and you could decide what kind of coverage you were going to do. So all you have to do is take the script out and you say, okay, now we're going to do the wide shot. And people say, well, what do I do? Well, it starts with Lancelot and it ends with a sudden glow of flame seen through the window. And so Lancelot knows all that action. His last line is, I'm going to challenge the dragon. Right? Then you say, okay, now we're going to do a close-up. Okay? So you change, get in tight on Elsa. And she only has to do this bit of dialogue. So you save a lot of time. You don't have to do the whole page in close-up because you've already thought about it and you've decided, well, you only need to see her in close when she's saying these lines. Yeah. So that's what you do, right? You get it down on paper, and then once it's on paper, and it's perfect on paper, and let your team read it and make comments, then you break it down. You break it down in terms of location. Where is this? What things do you need? What people do you need? 
Okay? Now, once you've got all that information, you can put a schedule together. Okay? And I'm, I'm telling you, if you want to, you want to get something that uh, looks good on as a final product, it's going to take longer than you think. And here's another thing, is that I'm trying to round up all kinds of resources, people that can help you and loan you equipment and that kind of stuff. And if you're going to ask them to come out and lend their time, help you out, it's best to be organized so you don't waste your time. Eh? So if you put a schedule together, and then schedules can change on the day, once again, it's, there's, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, is there any award for best schedule? No. No? No, okay. So, schedule is just a working document, just a blueprint, but it's uh, going to help you out when you get all your stuff together to shoot your winning video. So the reason we have a schedule is it always takes longer than you think, so if you get organized, you won't be wasting your time. It's to make your life easier. Okay? Wow. What, what is that? That's a schedule. So, uh, when I went off to shoot the two minute version that was cut down to the 30 second version, it was cut down to the 15 second version. This is the schedule I came up with. Right? I had a script and I'd, I'd broken it down into wide shot, close up, long shot, medium shot. That just means how close you are to the subject, right? Medium shot shot is, well here, I should, I should tell you, wide shot is, you can see their feet and their head at least. Medium shot, maybe from the knees up or from the waist up is medium shot. Close up is like head and shoulders. Extreme close up is like their eyes and their nose, right? So that's what those symbols mean. So I already knew what kind of shot I wanted. And I knew the location. EXT stands for exterior, that stands for interior. So you can see I made my life easier. I organized all the shots that were on the third floor together. And I worked my way up the building from the second floor to the third floor. Because if I have lights and crew and camera, there's a, there's a column here on the left and it gives you the time. What do I do to show you the time? Anyways, so that means that when, during the day when we're shooting the guy firing the musket, people could be up setting the table because they knew that was the next thing to shoot. So we were able to shoot it all in one day. Two pages. And we got three videos out of it. We got a two minute video, a 30 second video, and a 15 second video. So this, you know, people know where they're going. So if you're shooting without lights outside, the guys with the lights can run up to the second floor. They know that's the next shot. So that you don't have to you can compress things. Things can happen really fast. Okay? So, anyways, it all started at 10 a.m. Then at noon, we were up there. At 2 p.m., we were there. 3 p.m., 4 p.m. So. And it didn't happen that way at all. It didn't? No. no there's no... It's a beautiful looking schedule, but uh, things changed on the day, right? But at least we had a plan. And at least we could, we didn't forget any shots, right? And people sort of knew what they were doing. So, anyways, just to recap, go crazy. Remember, we got, as we went on here in this presentation, we got a little more detail. There was scripts to write and breakdown to do and schedules. Don't think about that at the beginning. Just, just let your imagination go crazy. If you want the guy to, to, uh, Take a spaceship to the moon and write it into your script. Wait, wait till the breakdown to figure out, you know, how you're going to do it. But make sure you get it on paper. I want you to go out and start shooting your videos with a script of some sort, and it can be, you know, master scene format. That's the way the pros do it. But you can do it any way you want, or it can be sort of like audio on one side and video on the other side, or whatever. But write it down as much as you can. Whatever's in your head, try and get it down on paper because that's what your team, you can share it with your team and then everybody is literally on the same page. Okay? And the two formats I showed you are the easiest ones to read and the easiest ones to break down. So there's two of them. There's the master scene format with character names and dialogue written a certain way. 
so that one page equals one minute. And then there's the uh, audio video format, which has got all the uh, video on one side and all the audio on the other side. And then you break it down. And breaking it down is then you look through it, you look at your script through different lenses, like your location lens and your props lens and your time of day lens. And you try and organize it into a schedule. Who, what, when, and what if. That's a good question. I didn't go over that. But once you have your script, go through your script and say, what if? What if it rains that day? What if so-and-so doesn't show up? Have a plan B. Because if you get a lot of people involved and equipment involved, you know, um, people, it's not good if they're standing around scratching their heads. You should have plan B in mind, right? So what if, what if what? What's another what if question? There's weather, there's people, all these things. All these things are undependable. People are undependable. What is undependable? Equipment is undependable. It'd be great. If you're working in teams and everybody's got a camera, what if somebody's camera dies? Someone else has got a camera, they can, they can step in and shoot it on their camera. Right? Um, and the next workshop is production. So yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of bringing some people in, and then I'm, I'm thinking that maybe with the crew that I work here, we'll do a little demonstration about how we set up a shot, <coughs> and get things rolling. All the things we can care.